New South Wales Liberal Senator Holly Hughes joins me now. Holly, when I first heard last night about what was said by Lydia Thorpe, I thought it may have been simply an outrageous, but simply a slut-shaming sledge by her. But the context of this is really important to clarify for viewers, isn't it? Look, and it is the context in which it was said. And uh, when it occurred, uh, a number of senators came over to me and spoke to me. I uh, did sort of take a bit of a personal check and say, well, am I misreading this? Am I reading too much into it? And every single one of the colleagues I spoke to said, Holly, you are not. That is exactly the first thought I had. So this was not something that I took as an inference, but no one else saw. Every single one of my colleagues, and I'm talking from across parties, cross bench, took the inference in exactly the same way. And I've seen some people in, you know, we know the wonderful land of Twitter, are trying to defend Lydia, saying, you know, how would she even know she had an autistic son? I'm incredibly vocal on this issue. Yes. I have been vocal on this issue yeah. before coming to the place. Both uh, my son and I have done a lot of promotional stuff. I chair the Autism Inquiry. Yeah. Senator Thorpe uh, has been in the chamber. In fact, I think it was last week. Uh, when I made a speech on autism, what next, a, a fabulous new resource we've just set up. I speak about this uh, issue very, very often and I regularly invoke uh, my family's experience with it because I do know how we can do autism better in this country and how autism families do struggle uh, to get support and resources that they require. Uh, so there is absolutely no way anyone in this chamber, in this entire parliament, and probably anyone who pays any attention to politics at all uh, would not know that I, you know, they would, they would absolutely know I had a child with autism. I've met your boy who has autism. My beautiful Freddo. Yeah, I've seen how gorgeous he is. I've seen how difficult it can be, and in particular, someone who is a single mum like yourself, and a full-time politician, I don't know how you do it. When that was said, how much did that hurt? Uh, so, Chris, I don't cry very often, i got to say. I'm not one of those people that's uh, easily offended. I'm, you know, pretty tough when it comes to it most of the time. Uh, by the time I got to the Senate lobby, uh, which is sort of our room adjacent to the Senate chamber, I was in tears because you can say whatever you like about me, but you attack my beautiful boy. Um, yeah, I, OK, everyone knows my Achilles heel now, but you attack my beautiful boy. Um, it's, it, it hurts and it cuts. And apart from the offensiveness of it and the inappropriate of behaviour within the Senate chamber, for anyone to suggest that somehow uh, children with special needs, that children with a disability, that if you kept your legs shut, they wouldn't have been born. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I just... It is, it is so offensive. And it's not only offensive to me. It is offensive to every autism family oh. in Australia. Yeah, without doubt. Look, Lydia Thorpe, given what I've seen this week, not just with your incident, given what I've mm -hmm. seen, I think she is grossly unhinged. But what did we see today? Nothing from the leadership of the Greens. They all ran for cover mm. and ran under the table. And I don't know how Lydia Thorpe, given her ravings and her outrage, outrageous suggestion to you, I don't know how she's still got a job. Well, I can confirm, and I've actually had journalists me uh, message me through the day saying, since you... I spoke to Laura Jays this morning. Since you've spoken to Laura Jays, where I'd confirmed, I had not heard from one Greens... Senator or their leader, Adam Bant, uh, a number of journalists have messaged me during the day to just say, have you heard anything? Not a word. We and I have been in it. and out of the chamber whilst they have been there. Um, I made a speech today that highlighted their lack of uh, a willingness to apologise. I pointed out the words were, hi, Senator, I apologise for my colleague's conduct. That's all that's required. Uh, not one of them had the gall to come up to me. Uh, not one of them had the gall to look at me. Uh, and then what I also spoke about today with Tanya Plibersek's comments about is it true, 
uh, not one of the ALP women that was in the chamber at the time would lift their eyes to look at me. Uh, it is... This is how desperate the ALP are to go into a coalition with the Greens yeah. that the week the Jenkins report is released, they allow this abuse of a female Conservative senator to go completely unchecked. Yeah. And, you know, can you imagine if the shoe was on the oh, other foot? You'd be nailed to if the cross. I, if I had said that to Senator Thorpe, uh, aside from the fact, uh, and I did radio and TV this morning where the point was made, my feet wouldn't have touched the floor Correct. as I was out of the chamber, but I would have been an independent by last night. Yeah, exactly. There is exactly. no way I would still be a member of the Liberal Party if I had made that comment and the national broadcaster would be calling for my lynching. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've got to leave not, it there, Holly. And you know what? Not a word. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's disgrace. The silence is as disgraceful as the words that mm. were said. I'll leave you to go Look, and see your little boy just, tomorrow. Just finally, yeah. I know, just finally one of the things that I just want to say that we should consider in this, it's not only what Lydia Thorpe said, it is important we look at how people react. Yeah. And I think Tanya Plibersek and some other people have demonstrated that today in a very stark way. Senator Holly Hughes, thank you for your time.